Hi, I have a rather simple and stupid idea. It can help increase the travel range of electric cars to infinity, which I think is very important. Why? Because I think we must stop being such a cancer on the face of the planet. <sighs> Sorry, I have to do this rant for the next few minutes of the video. You can skip to after the rant if you want. See, life existed on Earth for billions of years nicely until we came along. And now we are at a certain smart level as people, not too dumb and not too smart. Just smart enough to use all the resources to our advantage, be ambitious and want everything nice. But not smart enough to see that we are killing ourselves and the life on the planet in the process by not using the good resources, but using what comes fast and easy to make more money. We have overpopulated the planet with no sign of stopping. Since over 2 million years ago until 1960 AD, the human population has grown to 3 billion. And from 1960 to 2018, in just 58 years to over 7.5 billion. India is catching up while China is slowing down. And not far behind, we have sub-Saharan Africa approaching exponentially to kick everyone's butt. Some people like having too many kids. Don't. I will find you. And I'll cut your d off. Have one or two kids and raise them as good as possible. But some other people, due to the lack of education and quality of living, fall back to their animal instinct, thinking to overreproduce to increase the survival chance of species. Unfortunately, due to the advancement in technology and medicine, this just results in exponential growth. Trust me, our survival now depends on negative growth. More people create more pollution. One type of pollution is solid garbage and plastic or poisonous liquids and gases which hurt everyone on the planet. That's why we are more cautious about them because their effect is more obvious. But the other side of air pollution is greenhouse gases like CO2. Those gases are not very harmful to humans immediately and that's why not everyone believes it's a problem or cares about it. Don't get me wrong, it has hurt the planet significantly already by acidification of the oceans that destroys the sea life or heat waves that burn the jungles or melt polar ice caps releasing even more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. But if we let this go out of hand, there is no coming back and almost everyone dies, plants, animals and humans. Almost everyone dies, you know, so there is a good chance that we will come back to repopulate the planet and destroy it all over again. Greenhouse gases trap sun's energy in the atmosphere and increase Earth's temperature. If you go to NASA's website, you will see how the Earth's temperature has been rising over the past 130 years. The average temperature has risen around 1 degree Celsius, a couple of degrees at the poles. Doesn't sound like much, eh? I mean, I've grown in a much hotter country and I've survived. Heat waves killing people? What's a few thousand people dying considering that the world population is growing by around a hundred million a year? <laughs> Just means more subscribers for me. <laughs> what you may not understand is that, according to a trusted and true study that I leave the link below, just two more degrees rise in the average earth temperature, which we may reach around the year 2035 if we don't change anything, we will pass the point of no return. Above that threshold, Earth doesn't need people's help with the temperature rise. It would be warm enough to generate its own greenhouse gases by releasing methane gas trapped in the polar ice caps or setting more wildfires to the ever-drying jungles and more. Just in the past two or three years, here in Vancouver, we had much more wildfires. So much that we didn't have a clearer sky for a whole month this year. This will just get worse until we lose all our jungles because they won't have time to reproduce before the next wildfire hits and that's on top of us cutting the trees. No more trees absorbing the CO2. So there won't be any way to pull it back. Maybe a runaway greenhouse effect like what happened on the planet Venus? No, fortunately it will be much milder here on Earth. Like I said, almost everyone dies. It will be so hot that most land on Earth will be inhabitable. Most jungles dry out and burn. There will be mass extinction of land and sea animals. If you are lucky, there might be a small area around the Arctic Ocean or Antarctica where the temperature can be tolerable. But then the future 9 billion people won't fit in that area. What do you think will happen? <laughs> no. My guess is that it will start as World War III between countries and then later between families over land and food. 
Okay, now that you get where we are headed, we need to stop that doom. Even if in your mind there is a slight chance of that happening. It is by no means a slight chance though. We can push this deadline back if we work together to fix things. But pushing back is not enough, we need to revert the damage. We have a few options and we must use them all. We have to stop increasing the population and we can't rely on Thanos for help. This must be done peacefully and the key to that, and really anything, is education. Everyone must have a good level of education to make correct decisions. That's why thanks to Keysight I'll give away scopes and tools at the end of my video. Because if you know electronics, well it's less likely to find a mate. Keysight, the best alternative to birth control. And we must stop polluting earth now, especially with greenhouse gases. Starting to use electric cars is one step in the right direction, but even that isn't that significant. Right now, China and United States are the main contributors to greenhouse gases. Every country is different, but let's focus on some data from United States. According to this chart, transportation contributes to 28% of those gases, and ironically, electricity that's supposed to be clean contributes a similar 28% pollution. Looking at what sources are used to generate electricity in US, 65% is from coal, oil and natural gas. Only 1% is solar. That's bullshit. And looking at this graph, around 75% of gas emissions are from cars and trucks, and the rest are from other sources like aircrafts. This means even if you replace all the cars and trucks in the US with the electric ones, it reduces emissions there by around 7%. Don't get me wrong, 7% is great. But why the hell are we using coal and natural gas to generate electricity? Why is solar power only a 1% source of electricity in US? It should replace the entire gas, oil and coal. The sun is shining everywhere. Instead of fighting to liberate the oil in Middle East, we should be fighting over these vast deserts all around the world. Oh, Arabia is sitting on oil and is a desert. We should liberate them. If the electricity is 100% clean and the cars and trucks are all electric, we could easily reduce emissions by 42%. Let's do it. Now switching over to electric cars, the main problem facing them is the battery technology. Nowadays electric cars can run an average of 200 kilometers on a fully charged battery, while my car can run 400 kilometers on a full tank of gas. 200 kilometers is more than enough for all the intercity activities for multiple days, and every night you return home, you plug in your car and it's full the next day. The cost of electricity is around one tenth of gasoline. I would save around $1,500 a year. And electric cars don't need much maintenance either. There is no oil change and no brake pad change because they break using the regenerative braking. Regenerative braking takes the kinetic energy of the car and charges the battery when you brake. It saves the braking energy unlike the regular brake pads that waste that energy as heat. So why doesn't everyone buy electric cars? Because they are more expensive and they take forever to charge, around half an hour on supercharged to get to 80%. The range is really only important for that one time of the year that you want to go on a road trip. With all the money you save from the electric car, you can afford to rent a gasoline car for that one trip. So the shorter range is not a good excuse. The range wouldn't even be a problem if it didn't take so long to charge. A poisonous gasoline car takes only 5 minutes at the gas station to refuel, while it takes at least half an hour to charge an electric car. The price of electric cars will go down if more people buy it. And more people will buy it if the range and the charge time matches a gasoline car. And that's where my stupid idea comes in. What if the electric cars could run forever in a highway without needing to stop and charge? If you just use my free energy motor, there is no free energy! The electric car range is perfect for city commutes. It's only when you're driving in a highway for long distances that it falls short. What if you could charge the electric car while driving in a highway? You can't do that with a gasoline car. One mistake and the car explodes. But electricity is much safer and easier to protect against faults. Here's the idea, which is probably not unique either. Let's say if an electric car receives one minute of fast supercharge, it can roughly drive for another 10 kilometers. So if we install one kilometer sections of supercharged lane 10 kilometers apart and the cars would have to line up and pass through at 60 kilometers an hour, they would receive one minute of charge that would help them drive the next 10 kilometers and reach the next supercharged lane. This lane could be a tunnel so that the car would have to stay in there for the entire stretch. The charging system could also recognize the car and send an invoice to the owner, say every month. 
I'm thinking maybe something like those electric buses sticks up and touches the charging contacts on the ceiling of the tunnel because the direct contact delivers the most power. Things can easily get automated. The car could sense that you are in the special lane and would take over the controls to fix the speed and heading. So you would just sit back and get charged. This would minimize the mistakes. Let me do a demo. I got this toy train and attached some contacts here, which directly connect to my 2.7 volt 400 farad supercapacitor that is also connected to the battery contacts of the train. And here's my rail. I have added my charging tunnel right here, and these rails you see deliver 10 amps directly to the super cap from my power supply. And the train, when running, draws around 100 milliamp from the super cap. So we are charging at 100 times the discharge rate. Then the train goes out and laps around the track, which is around 9 times the length of this charging track. So with one charge, it should be able to lap over 10 times before needing charge. Okay, let's push it into the rail so it starts charging. There we go. It's charging now. Should start going any second. There we go. It's going. And it's not going very fast at all. And done. Wow. You think that would be enough? Ooh, it's already derailing itself. Piece of junk train. <laughs> this is going so slow. If I had a voltage regulator installed at the output of the capacitor, then the speed of the train would be much more constant and faster. Third lap, going as slow as a snail. Awfully slow. Okay, at the end of this lap, I'll send it into the charging station. Come on, come on, make the contacts. Make the contacts, you can do it. Oh, something's stuck. Oh, go, 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 go. Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. Ah, it's charging again. Oh, derailed. Piece of junk. Well, it's not bad. It went five laps, like 45 times of the length of the charging track. Ah, oh, damn it. Derailed. Damn it, this stupid. No, wait. Ah! Yeah, look at this. It's charged so much. It's making the sound now. Oh, derailed. But now it has so much charge. It can probably go for like a hundred lap or something. Damn it! Fine. Just keep going like that if that floats your boat. Stupid train. Ah, well, you get the point. Anyway, you know what that means? Maybe instead of focusing on the battery capacity, we should sacrifice that a bit and instead increase the supercharged speed. That way, anywhere we have a moment, we can get a significant charge, like behind a red light or in a charging lane. Give away time! Maybe I can't come up with a groundbreaking idea, but at least I can provide tools to people so they can learn and mark my words. One of them will break ground. Thanks to Keysight for providing these incredible tools, I have one scope to give away to my patrons at patreon.com and viewers. Also a patron said they like to have a lab power supply, so I'll give 5 power supplies to my patrons thanks to Circuit Specialists which has provided most of my tools here. It will be a great support for my channel if you become a patron and you will always be in all the draws or sign up for the scope giveaway from the link below. And this month, one Keysight scope goes to a lucky school in Australia and if your school needs tools, sign it up from the link below. And for everyone's sake, keep the planet clean!